Welcome back to Mathematical Marvels, where we're about to explore the strange things that happen when you try to count to infinity. Obviously, we can't really count to infinity, but we could ask which of two infinite collections of objects is bigger. Now, so I don't have to keep saying collections of objects, I'll introduce the notion of a set. A set is simply a collection of objects, like the set of whole numbers, the set of fractions, or the set of towns in Yorkshire where it's currently raining. We'll start off with so-called countably infinite collections of objects. These are sets where you can, in principle, label each object with a whole number, like the rooms of an infinite hotel. Suppose we actually have an infinite hotel, where all the rooms are full, and an infinite train then arrives carrying countably many people. Can we fit them all in the hotel? Well, if the manager goes on the public address system and asks everyone to move to the room with twice their current room number, then after an awful lot of walking, only the even-numbered rooms will be filled, so we can put the train load of people in the odd-numbered rooms. What's happened here is rather strange. All the original occupants of the hotel fitted into just the even-numbered rooms, which means there must be as many even numbers as whole numbers. Mathematically, what we did to show this was to match exactly one whole number or person to each even number or room, and this sort of matching is exactly what we mean when we talk about two sets having the same size. A set has five elements, if I can assign exactly one object from it to each of the five fingers on my right hand. Now onto something even odder, the fact that the set of fractions is also the same size as the set of whole numbers. We can write out the fractions in a grid like this. As we go right along a row, the numerators increase, and as we go down a column, the denominators increase. Now to match these fractions with the whole numbers, we start at one and trace out the diagonals like this, skipping out any fractions which are the same as ones we've already covered. And in this way, we can write out a list of all the fractions just by following the arrows. Now we match 1 to the first fraction on our list, 2 to the second fraction on our list, and so on. And so the set of fractions really is the same size as the set of whole numbers. At this point, you might think that you can't get any bigger infinities that you can match up any set with the whole numbers. But this isn't true. Let's take a look at the real numbers between 0 and 1. A real number is just anything that can be written as a decimal. Suppose, for the sake of a contradiction, that you can match up all the real numbers with the whole numbers, so that we can write out a list of all the real numbers in the right-hand column with the corresponding whole number on the left. Now let's define a new real number x that doesn't appear anywhere in the right-hand column. We'll choose the first digit of x to be anything different from this, the second digit to be anything different from this, the third to be different from this, and so on. Now x can't be any of the numbers in the right-hand list because it always has at least one digit different to them. So our list didn't contain all the real numbers. So there must be more real numbers than whole numbers. So in conclusion, some infinities are bigger than others, and an infinite hotel would be a great business idea if you could find enough bricks. Next time, we'll be seeing how mathematicians are breaking proverbs by having a cake and eating it too. Goodbye.